Jack Davenport, who star on Smash as Derek Wills, an arrogant Broadway director staging a musical about Marilyn Monroe. Uh, how were you cast on the show? Uh, the, the traditional way, in so much as uh, it was a fairly um, uh, hot pilot script, to say the least, um, and it landed on my desk. My, my agents and managers sent it to me. And I just, you know, I went into the casting director in Los Angeles. I, you know, did some scenes. They sent them off to uh, Mr. Greenblatt and Mr. Spielberg, and then they asked me to do the job. I mean, in fairness to them, they, sometimes that can be a, it can be a miserably protracted experience, uh, and they were were very kind to me and got it over and done with very quickly. So, but yeah, it wasn't. It was nothing special. It was just the way it normally goes, I guess. Uh, were you familiar with musical theater before you took the role? I, well, yeah, I was familiar with it, and so yeah, I mean, I, I, yes, absolutely was. I, I mean, I, I'm from a theater family. My parents are both actors and directors in the theater. Um, they don't work in musical theater, and the odd thing was was that I, I my knowledge of musical theater up to this point was defined by the fact that I didn't really like musicals very much. I found them a bit. I would, I would always sit there thinking, why are you singing? Just say it. Um, because it wasn't, I mean, I'm, and this isn't, I'm not going to pretend to be like some huge opera buff, because I'm not. But there's something about the sort of historicism and antiqu antiquity of that art form where you sort of, and they're generally they're singing in German or Italian or French. And if you sort of, somehow that seems less, I don't know, um, contrived. Um, and the musicals I did like tended to be the silly ones, like Little Shop of Horrors. Um, the ones that started to take themselves a bit seriously, I, um, I, I went a bit cold on. But subsequently, uh, you know, now that I know a lot more about what it takes to actually create those kinds of shows and the amount of commitment that the people who perform in them actually, and, and indeed the amount of extraordinary ability they have to have, um, I, I, my respect and interest in them has actually um, completely changed. Um, and I'm not just saying that, gen genuinely. I, I, now, I suppose in some ways I now, get to, I now see them with a sort of pseudo-insider's perspective. So, I, um, so yeah, no, I, I didn't like them, but I'm converted. Uh, so, have you seen any musicals since then? Yeah, have you, you know, branched out and looked into any other kinds of musicals? Sure. I mean, uh, I, I, I've seen a bunch. Uh, I mean, uh, since I got, you know, since I got the job, I, I felt it was fairly important to kind of vaguely immerse myself in that world. And you know, we were fortunate enough that um, two of our producers, Neil Marin and Craig Zaden, um, their production of How to Succeed in Business was just starting, so we got to see that. And I also got to sit down and talk with Rob Ashford, who directed and choreographed that. And those director choreographer hyphenates, there aren't that many of them actually anymore. And Derek, the character I'm playing, is is that. And um, so I was, it was very useful to to speak with him about what that's actually like. Um, I also went to see things, you know, uh, like the Book of Mormon, uh, which I, I think I can say is probably the single most deliriously joyous evening I've spent in a theatre probably in 20 years. Um, and in fact, that show in many ways is responsible for completely reorienting my attitude towards musicals in general, I think, because um, I think on so many levels, uh, it's it, it just redefines what you can, in fact, do with that particular form. And, and you know, the, uh, uh, Matt Parker and Trey Stone, uh, or is it Trey Stone and Matt Parker? I'm never quite sure. The South Park guys, <laughs> they're, they're, those two, they know who they are. They don't confuse each other. It's just me. Um, you know, there's something that, to be sort of that, I suppose, profane and yet intelligent is a very, diff very, very difficult trick to pull off. You can be one or the other, but both at the same time is nigh on impossible. And I think there's something so delicious about the, um, about how far they push things in that show in the sense that you sort of break on through into this other realm where in many ways, you know, the, the amount of light that is shone on hypocrisy by that show is kind of, I've never seen anything like it. And, you know, let's be honest, who doesn't like just 
laughing their ass off for two and a half hours. I, honestly, I was, I was like many millions of people at this point, completely blown away by it. So that was kind of that was the, very much the tipping point for me. That particular show. Uh, Derek, your character can be a kind of a taskmaster, barking orders, telling off the other characters. Uh, do you enjoy playing a character who always says what's on his mind, however impolite it may be? I really do. Um, it, you know, it's it, it's always something of a. It's quite liberating and quite fun to play someone who doesn't really genuinely care what other people think about him. Because I don't know about you, but I sadly I do care what other people think about me. I wish I didn't, but I do. Um, and so that's. You know, that's very, it gives you an awful lot of room to play with uh, in terms of performance. But also I think, and I think this is, you know, credit to the, to the writing. You know, one of the things you have to remember about these sorts of characters is that, um, or rather, the, you know, these, these, uh, director, choreographer, um, hyphenates is that, um, creating a new musical, right? Or any musical, but a new musical, let's, let's keep it to what the show's about. And, you know, uh, composers might disagree with me about this, but the thing about a musical number is, on paper, it's a total abstraction. It could be anything. It could be anything. You know, yeah, there's some notes on the stave and there's some lyrics, but you could, if you wanted, have, you know, dwarves abseiling in from stage left and, a, you know, a laser beam. I mean, it could be anything you like. Uh, so somebody has to take that abstraction and shape it into something, as well as direct spoken scenes and make them feel, you know, grounded and real. And because it's a musical, the numbers of people involved, it's not like doing a pincer play where you have like three other actors and you sit in a room together for five, you know, there's, there's hundreds of people and someone has to take charge. Someone does, I mean, that's just a fact. And, and you can't really worry too much about, you know, hurting people's feelings on the way to trying to get the job done, really. Um, and, I th and, and I'm very grateful to the way the writers uh, shape the character in the sense of, I agree, he, on a fairly regular basis, you know, does or says things that are relatively unspeakable. However, um, you know, he does... He never he never apologises particularly. He does once, I think, but but what he does do is he ration, he's allowed to rationalise it, and I think that's quite interesting because I think it allows the audience to have a sense of this character not as some kind of you know pantomime villain because I don't think that's what he is at all. I think he's you know uh, a driven, ambitious, professional. Um, unfearful kind of guy. He's many, in fact, in many ways, he's lots of things we'd all quite like to be. That what we might not quite like is the sort of person we'd have to be to be that. You know, that's, I think that's probably the truth of it. So, um, you know, uh, yeah, he can be a little harsh, but, you know, that's just the way it goes. That's, that's the, and that's that field as well. Uh, you're an actor, so of course you've had plenty of Allegedly. experience working with. Uh, you've had uh, plenty of experience working with uh, directors uh, in your career. Have I you have. ever worked with directors like Derek? A bit, yeah. I mean, I, 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 it would have been foolish of me to um, base him entirely on one person because I'd probably be in court right now as opposed to talking to you. Um, but yeah, for sure, I have. Um, I have taken small elements of people I have worked with. But, you know, don't forget, be it theatre, film, television, whatever it is, um, the director is, is where the buck stops and is the boss. And, and it does take, whether the director be a man or a woman, a particular kind of uh, a type A per, uh, personality to do that. I mean, and you know what? Even the directors who kind of, you know, give a certain kind of all shucks vibe and kind of it, it seems. I mean, you know, there's a way of getting. You know, passive aggression is you know is a viable um, uh, route to getting what you want as much as uh, aggression. Aggression, I suppose. 
since playing Derek, have you yourself been inspired to direct, or does perhaps playing Derek make you not want to direct? 